I want to talk about the future of global governance with the help of a little history. Um, there's nothing new about the rulers of this world feeling powerless in the face of global challenges. But my colleagues have explained why today's global challenges are of a scale, variety, complexity and interconnectedness, which creates an unprecedented need for global governance. Unfortunately, the supply of global governance is lagging far behind, as we saw in the chaotic ending of the Copenhagen summit on climate change. Now, there's an Oxford school of thinking about these things, which speaks of the anarchical society of states. And we could persuasively argue that the centripetal forces pulling together towards global governance are today weaker than the centrifugal forces, which include the starkly differential impact of these same global challenges on different countries, the rise of non-Western great powers with a strong emphasis on sovereignty and different values, and the fact that historically periods of significant power shifts between states have been periods of increased tension and usually of war. How to avoid that? Six ways of ordering the anarchical society of states. The single hegemon, UN and international organizations, the G groupings of different states, all the many G forces, a community of all the world's democracies, the Huntingtonian or the Westphalian. Sam Huntington's famous clash of civilizations was actually a formula for avoiding that clash, essentially by a system of spheres of influence in which core states like America and China would say to each other, you do it your way, we do it ours and mutual respect. And finally, the Westphalian model of competing sovereign nation states developed in Europe between the 17th and 19th centuries and spread to the world, uh, mainly by European imperialism. Now, which of these or which combination of these is going to work? Ten years ago at Davos, we were all talking of number one. The unipolar world, hyperpower United States, remember that? Hasn't fared very well in the last decade under Emperor Julius Bush. Uh, not a good contender, I think, for the multipolar world of the next 20 to 30 years. On the other extreme, the UN General Assembly isn't going to do the job either. The key combination here, the holy grail, is the right mix of legitimacy and efficacy. The UN General Assembly may have all the le legitimacy in the world, but if it's not effective, it'll lose its legitimacy. The US military has precisely the reverse problem. Again, not a new insight. 14th century fresco of good government, the Italian supermodel of her day, representing peace, is resting on a whacking great suit of armor. How to do it today? I think the best way forward is a combination of my second, third, and to some extent fourth models in what I call M to the power of three. That is messy but muscular multilateralism. We have to keep working on the reform and strengthening of our international institutions under international law, as Ian just observed, but they will not be effective without strategic coalitions of the able and willing to take agendas forward. The G20 is, of course, despite this photo, one of the serious new contenders. We need to talk about how it can be made more effective given institutional form. But even within the G20, which is still a very large group, you need smaller strategic coalitions for action. The next slide shows you how just three actors, what I call the G3, the United States, China, and the EU have, by crude measures, roughly two-thirds of the world's economic and military power. If just those three propose a common way forward on a particular global challenge, or better still, if it's a G4 or 5 or 7 or 9, we have a way forward to work through the international organizations the international system, not, I emphasize, 
a new directoire. But the vital ingredient of messy muscular multilateralism is a gender setting strategic coalitions for change. That's all I have time for, but if you come over to my whiteboard, <laughs> we can discuss it further and light up an energy saving intellectual light bulb. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy.